Today on Sports Central, we'll be going over our next final prediction of this offseason, and it's going to be over quite possibly the biggest surprise team in all of the 2019 season, and that would be the Utah Utes. And this is a team that was 11-3 last season. Of course, most people expected them, like myself, to have eight or nine wins last season, and they kind of came out of absolutely nowhere and ended up having an 11-win season, which was a huge surprise to many, but whether or not this team can improve on that in 2020 is what we're going over here today. We're also going to be going over your returning production along with a full prediction and preview on every game on Utah's schedule heading into the 2020 season. With that, let's look at your season trends from last season for this team. Of course, once again, they were 11-3 overall, and they were 7-1 between September and October, and then 4-2 between November and the postseason. So, I mean, this is a team that started off very hot. I mean, they had several really good wins um, in those first couple of months, and of course, they kind of dropped off as the season went on, and especially when they got to the postseason. I mean, when you were in when they were in the Pac-12 championship, they really did not have a good game against Oregon. And then, of course, they played Texas in the Alamo Bowl, and they got blown out there as well. So really, I mean, this season was great in the regular season. I mean, the postseason was not very good for Utah last season. But, I mean, still, this is a team that definitely, I mean, they surprised a lot of people, including myself. It still was all around a great season. I think most Utah fans should be happy about how well Utah did last season. As far as your key wins, though, you beat BYU in week number one, 30 to 12. So that was a good win right off the bat for this team. They also beat Washington State 38 to 13. They had a shutout against California, 35 to zip. And let me remind you, in mean, California last season, they were very good up until around that point when Chase Garbers got injured. So, I mean, that California team was very good last season for a good chunk of the season. And then on November 2nd, they beat Washington on the road in Seattle, 33 to 28. Then they finished off the regular season with a win against Colorado, 45 to 15. So, I mean, this team all around, once again, just a great season. Lots of great wins on this schedule for Utah last season. As far as the returning production looks, of course, you lose your starting quarterback, Tyler Huntley, which he was a good quarterback. He's very underrated, I think, uh, I think personally. I mean, he had over 3,000 yards with 19 touchdowns and four interceptions last season. He also had a 73% completion rate, which I think that's the best in the, or I think that was the best in the Pac-12 last season and one of the best completion percentages in the nation last season. I mean, he was a very accurate quarterback, and that's going to be a tough loss for Utah next season. I mean, once again, I'd say he was a very underrated quarterback. In, completion, er, in considering how accurate of a quarterback he was, I mean, yeah, that's going to be a really tough loss there. They do bring in quarterback Jake Bentley from South Carolina, though, um, so that's going to be a good bring in, I think, for Utah, and that's going to really cover their quarterback situation for next season. I mean, Jake Bentley was not one of the best. I'd say, I mean, he was okay quarterback in the SEC, um, I want to say he's one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC, but he still definitely got the job done for South Carolina while he was there, and he did put up a couple of great seasons. So I think for Jake Bentley, I mean, this was a good move for him, and it's kind of surprising to see a player go from South Carolina all the way to Utah. Uh, but in the end, I still think this is going to be a big, uh, a big addition for Utah next season, and I think Jake Bentley could quite, quite possibly be a big sleeper quarterback in the Pac-12 next season. I mean, considering how well he did, even in the SEC, which is the, probably the toughest conference in all of football, um, yeah, I think he's going to do very well at Utah, considering the Pac-12 really is not all that tough of a conference. As far as the running back core though, goes, though, you do lose your top running back in Zach Moss, uh, which last season he was a huge player for this team, definitely one of the best um, running backs in all of the Pac-12, as he did 1,800 total yards along with 17 touchdowns last season, so... That's going to be a very tough loss, and that's probably going to be the biggest concern, I would say, for this Utah team next season is going to be how the running back core does. I mean, this running back core, once again, when you lose as big of a player as Zach Moss was, I mean, that, that position is bound to decline for next season. So I am a little bit concerned about the running back core, but, I mean, Tyler Huntley last season, he, he almost was the second running back on this team with 290 yards of rushing with five touchdowns. So, I mean, in the end, this running back core – is still very uncertain. I mean, Jake Bentley, or yeah, Jake Bentley is not much of a rushing quarterback, so it'll be interesting to see how they're able to deal with that. But in the end, I mean, as far as the receiving core goes, it looks very good right now as you return your top receiver slash your top tight end, Brant Keith. And of course, last season he put up 700 yards with nine touchdowns. So yeah, he's a very good player, one of the best tight ends in all of the Pac-12 as well. So this team, once again, I mean, to have Tyler Huntley, which quite possibly was the best, or I'd say the second best, probably behind. Justin Herbert for quarterbacks in the Pac-12 last season. I mean, you, all, you also probably have the best running back, probably the best um, tight end as well. So this Utah team was definitely bound to have a great season in 2019. Most people just did not expect it heading into the 2019 season. But, I mean, the good thing is at least they do return that top tight end. That's going to be big 
Uh, but as far as the receiving core goes, I mean, you also return your top receiver in Brian Thompson, which that's going to be a good return as he had 460 yards with three touchdowns last season. And you also return your second receiver in Jalen Dixon, uh, which last season he put up 454 yards with three touchdowns. So, yeah, this receiving core is looking very good for Jake Bentley, and I think that's going to be big uh, for him especially to be able to have as good of a receiving team as, go he's, as he's going to have. But once again, it goes back to that running back core and how much uncertainty there is there. I mean, they really did not have a second running back last season. I mean, really, they relied on Zach Moss so much that that could be a big impact on this team next season. Of course, they do lose their third receiver in Demarius Simpkins, uh, but really, he did not have all that big of an impact on this team, only 400 yards with three touchdowns last season. But as far as the offensive line looks, you do lose one on there. You also lose three defensive linemen and one linebacker as long as, or as well as three in the secondary. So really, where this Utah team is taking the hits is on the defense. I mean, they lose seven starters on that defense going into next season. So that's really where I think Utah could take a, big, a bit of a decline next season is just because of the defense. I mean, in general, this offense, once again, is looking pretty good. Uh, I mean, other than the running back core, really this offense is looking good. It's just the defense that does concern me for Utah next season. So watch out for that. But brings up the question, chances of another Pac-12 championship next season. Of course, they went on to the Pac-12 championship. They never actually won it. Uh, but they were able to make it there. So, I mean, for Utah next season, I mean, that South Division is still wide open. I mean, you got several teams in there that could easily win that South Division next season, I think. I mean, you got several teams in that Pac-12 Pac South. I mean, last season, going into the 2019 season, I mean, no one had any idea who was going to win that division. I mean, you had USC in there. Uh, you had Utah, of course. They were a team that some people expected. Um, but in the end, I mean, you also have, well, you got Arizona State as well. So, I'd say for Utah next season, that South Division is going to be much tougher for them to win. I mean, considering you got USC and Arizona State, two teams that I think definitely should make a big run for that Pac-12 championship game next season. But, I mean, in the end, still for Utah, I think this is probably a team that I would say I wouldn't be surprised about if they did end up winning their division again next season. As far as your schedule goes, though, you'd start off the season kind of like last season when you played BYU, but this time you got them at home. And then you got Montana State on the 12th, followed by a trip to Wyoming on the 19th. You got California on the road on the 26th, and watch out for that game. Uh, California next season, I mean, that's a team to watch out for. I mean, if you look at last season, they had Chase Garbers at quarterback, and they were undefeated, I think, when Chase Garbers had started. And then they were, I think they lost all their last five games of the season after he had gotten injured. So, I mean, that California team, they could be for real next season. Watch out for them. I think they are a big um, a big sleeper contender going into next season. So watch out for them, um, especially with it being on a road game. Then you got USC on the 2nd of October. That's going to be a big matchup there, especially in that South Division. Then you got Washington State on the road in Pullman on the 10th, followed by a game against Washington on the 17th. Then you got UCLA after a bye week, followed by Arizona, Oregon State, Arizona State, and then Colorado. So, I mean, I'd say your biggest games on the schedule would be California. And then you also got USC and Arizona State, both going to be big games next season and here's what i'm expecting at your september i think you go three and one i think you beat byu montana state and wyoming however i do think you take a loss to california and once again i go back to, i'm going to go back to that reason again and the main reason there is because california next season if they can keep chase garbers healthy i mean that team is for real if you looked at them last season when chase garbers did start at quarterback i mean they were undefeated i think i think they were seven and zero at one point so yeah, watch out for California. That is a team to watch out for. I think they're quite possibly the biggest sleeper in all of college football. Many people are sleeping on them going into next season. As far as your October looks, though, I do think you take another loss against USC. So you do um, take two losses in a row there between California and USC. However, I do think you get three other wins in that month, and I think you beat Washington State, Washington, and UCLA. So you come into your November with a 6-2 and two record which really is not all that terrible, but you definitely have to be Arizona State at this point, in which I do not think that you do. I think you beat Arizona. I think you beat Oregon State, but you do take a loss to Arizona State um, on November 21st, which, I mean, I went back and forth on that several times. I mean, Arizona State, they're going to be a great team next season, I still think. I mean, you got Jaden Daniels, which quite possibly is going to be the, or he quite possibly is the most underrated quarterback in all of the Pac-12 and probably um, in all of college football. So, I mean, you got him, and then you also have a great offense in general. Herm Edwards is doing a great job. And so I think Arizona State, with them being at home and at a very crucial point in the season, I think Arizona State does get a win over Utah on November 21st. 
Uh, but I do think Utah comes back and gets a win against Colorado on the 28th to finish off the regular season. So I do think you start off or you end up the season with nine and three, which really is not all that terrible considering you're losing quite a bit of talent, especially on that defense once again. It all goes back to that. But in the end, yeah, nine and three is going to be a record prediction for Utah next season. But let me know your thoughts and comments below on this team. If you enjoyed this preview, be sure to slap a like on it and subscribe as well. It really helps out the channel. I'd really appreciate that. But yeah, as always, thanks again for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this team in the comments below. Let me know your record predictions, your game predictions, etc. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. But yeah, as always, thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. And I will see you all later.